Hello. Hello out there. Hey, Rachel. Are you here this morning? My name is Whitney Nicely. I am here to teach everybody about Craigslist and how to use Craigslist. And Rachel said that Craigslist is sort of kind of a social media platform. And I have to completely agree that Craigslist is, well, I don't completely agree that it's sort of kind of a social media platform. I am telling you that Craigslist is a social media platform, okay? It is absolutely a social media platform. You won't believe the number of people that I will run into in real life that'll say, oh my gosh, I see your Craigslist post all the time. How do you do it? Or they'll call and they're like, all right, fine, I give up. I see you're on Craigslist all the time. What can you do to help me? So I am a real estate broker. I'm a real estate agent. I'm a real estate auctioneer. I'm a real estate coach. Okay, I do all real estate all the time, but I'm going to tell you how to use Craigslist no matter what kind of industry you're in. All right, so let's start with some basic pros and cons. Pros are that Craigslist is free, and I have notes here, so if I glance down, Look at my notes. Okay. Craigslist is free. It's awesome. Okay. So you don't need to spend a whole lot of money to use Craigslist effectively, which is awesome, right? The problem, the con of Craigslist being free is that it's free and you get what you pay for. Okay. So if you're not investing any money in it, they don't really take good care of you. But if you use it as much as you can, you'll see that you'll get a great return on no money, just a little bit of time. All right, so another pro is that it's very effective. Okay, I put houses on Craigslist, and I also advertise that I buy houses on Craigslist, and that's what I would encourage you to do. No matter what kind of industry you're in, you can advertise that, hey, I do this. If you're looking for this, give me a call. And it's easy to alter. Okay, so if you make a mistake in your ad or you need to take it down, say you're, you're busy, then you just log in and delete your message or you just log in and say, hey, this position has been filled or now you need to call this number or I changed the address, this is where it is now. Okay, so Craigslist is very easy to alter, it's very effective, and it's free. The last pro that I have is that it's fast, okay? If I put a house up on Craigslist, 20 minutes later, I've got different people driving by the property. It's almost immediate. And people hunt Craigslist all the time for all sorts of deals. Maybe you've even bought and sold off Craigslist before. Most people will buy from Craigslist, but there's not a lot of people using Craigslist. There's not a lot of people that have an account so that they can log in and use Craigslist or be on Craigslist. So that's a couple of the cons. You don't always get the full picture because it is free. All right, so the con that I'm saying for using Craigslist is that, you know, there's only so much time you can invest in it and you have to do posts every day. And I would tell you that if you're going to be using Craigslist, do not use the repost button. I want you to put a fresh copy and paste every day. If you look in the Knoxville Craigslist under real estate for sale, you'll see my house in there and you'll see every day that I've posted in to Craigslist because people shop on certain days of the weeks, people look at certain times of the day and the latest post is always on Craigslist. It's always at the top of Craigslist. So unless you are continually posting, you won't take over and I'll tell you that I've basically taken over, taken over Craigslist in Knoxville for real estate because I'm on there all the time. I have a VA and she sets it up so that it is continually posting to Craigslist. So I'm always on the top. Anytime you go to look for real estate in Knoxville, I'm on the top because it's important for me to stay on the top, to keep those leads coming in, okay? Uh, the other thing that's a con is Craigslist will automatically delete your post after 45 days. 
And I'll tell you that if you are continually posting to Craigslist, you don't need that 45 day window. You just post. And if you post every day, then nobody's going back 45 days to look for whatever it is you're advertising for. It, it's like the being on the first page of Google. If you're not on the first page of Craigslist for whatever it is you're buying or selling, nobody cares about you. Okay, so you need to copy and paste that post every day. Put it up there every day. Otherwise, nobody's going to find it in Craigslist. You have to be persistent about it. Okay, so the biggest problem that I have with Craigslist and that a lot of people ask me about is strangers. <laughs> Basically, it's just strangers, okay? So if you're on Craigslist and nobody's calling you, you're not getting any leads, and you log into your account and you see that everything's pink, that means it's been deleted. And since Craigslist is free and you get what you pay for, Anybody, whether they like you or don't like you, they can go in and delete your post and not even even a reason. Okay, so there's terms and conditions in Craigslist and you agree that you won't say anything vulgar, you won't be demeaning, you won't target a certain audience, you won't, you know, do all this stuff. But it could be very possible that your competition goes in every day and after you post to Craigslist, they delete your post. Or it could be that somebody's 16 year old thinks it's hilarious to go in there and delete all the real estate posts. Maybe you are trying to get into accounting or social media marketing and you keep posting in different markets and you say you do this and that and the other, but you say that you're based in Ohio or Minnesota or Tennessee and some local social media person doesn't want you in their territory so they always delete your post. The only way you can overcome that is just to be more persistent than they are. <laughs> okay, that's all I can tell you to do. They can delete your post. Craigslist won't send you a warning that your post has been deleted. They tell you why it was deleted. You could do everything right and somebody could just be having a bad day or just think it's hilarious to delete your post. I can't do anything about that for you. You can't do anything about that. Maybe change some stuff, maybe change your copy, maybe change your pictures, but mostly you just have to be more persistent than they are to get it to work. So those are my pros and cons. The best time to post to Craigslist is in your time zone, whatever time zone you're in, you need to post between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. You also need to post between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. and that's because when people get up in the morning it's just like I believe posting to social media the best time is 6 a.m. or 9 6 6 to 9 a.m. and 6 to 9 p.m. because people check social media they check Craigslist they check Zillow they check everything before they go to work in the morning they go to work they do their thing they do whatever but then at night when they get back home and they're winding down, they want to see what happened throughout the day. So you need to be posting again from 6 to 9 p.m. Okay? And you need to be consistent about it. Every morning from 6 to 9, every evening from 6 to 9, post two or three different times to Craigslist. But make sure you're posting at a time where yours will be fresh. It will be up at the top. So if you're posting at 6, and you notice that your calls start to knock off about 7, maybe post at 7, maybe post at 8. You want your post to be fresh. Okay, Rachel asked what industries can benefit from using Craigslist as a social media online platform, and I think any industry, but especially real estate. Okay, I'm all real estate all the time. I get tons of leads from Craigslist, but if you're a plumber, Put your ad on Craigslist because Craigslist feeds to Google. So if somebody's looking for a plumber in your area and you have 15 ads on Craigslist, Google will pick that up. If you're a photographer, you need to be on Craigslist. If you specialize in wedding photography, you need to be advertising on Craigslist under wedding photography. If you um, sell antiques, you definitely need to be on Craigslist under antiques for sale. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, Craigslist has a bracket for you. If you sell boats, if you sell cars, if you sell some sort of other service, you need to be on Craigslist. Every industry can benefit from Craigslist. The key to Craigslist is to be persistent 
and to keep going? Good question. Okay, so should you post in your city or not? Maybe you are a VA and you can work in any city. Then post. Post everywhere. Post, you know, if you have a client in Atlanta, then post on Atlanta's Craigslist and say, I help others in this area. Or say, you know, I'm virtual. You can post in New York. You can post in Washington. You might have more success, though, if you post in the smaller communities. Okay, so maybe you want to post in Knoxville instead of in Nashville. Nashville has a lot more competition, but people in Knoxville need social media marketers. Maybe you are in Atlanta, but there's three or four different sections of Atlanta. If you just focus in South Atlanta or North Atlanta, then post there. But I think, and I'm a bad example for this, but if I have a house for sale in Atlanta, I would not advertise it for sale in Knoxville because the percentage of people that are looking for a house in Atlanta would never think to look in the Knoxville Craigslist for a house in Atlanta. Okay, If you're looking for a house in Atlanta, you need to advertise it in Atlanta. If it's in North Atlanta, then go ahead and advertise it in North, South, East, and West Atlanta. That's fine. But if you're a social media marketer, you're a VA, you're online, you can be anywhere, then I see no reason why you shouldn't be in 15 different Craigslist cities. Okay? But definitely hit hard and heavy in your local city. If you're in Cincinnati, Ohio, make sure you've got two posts every day in Cincinnati, Ohio, because there are plenty of people there that are looking for you. If you're in Cincinnati, then advertise in Dayton, advertise in Louisville, advertise in Lexington, advertise close to you, and then maybe branch out to the more far off Craigslist cities. Okay, pictures. We are a picture, picture society. Pictures speak a thousand words. So put a couple different pictures up. And just like on Facebook ads or Craigslist ads, try a couple different ads. And I'll tell you, in real estate, on Craigslist, I could put a front dead center picture of a house up. Maybe some people will call. Then the next day, I'll put a side angle picture of the same house up. Maybe different people will call. The third day, I'll take this side of the house and put it up. The fourth day, maybe I put a picture of the kitchen up. Always put up, especially if you're advertising for real estate, put up three or four or five different pictures, but have 20 that you rotate in and out because just because this picture speaks to somebody today doesn't mean it'll speak to somebody else tomorrow. It also doesn't mean that this is the only picture that people will fall in love with. Maybe you have a pool at your house. Put up pictures of the pool and say, oh yeah, there's a house that goes along with this beautiful oasis. Okay, if you do social media marketing and you focus on LinkedIn, then put two or three different pictures of what you do on LinkedIn. Maybe it's the same picture, but you just change the background. Maybe one day you're red, the next day you're blue, the next day you're green, and the next day you're yellow. People will react differently to the same ad if it's different. They'll also relate differently to it if it's consistent. So if they see you once and you're a one-hit wonder, mm, that's cute. They see you every day and you speak to them every single day, they're going to call you. If I'm looking in Knoxville, say over in the search, I, I type in plumber. And one plumbing company comes up and they have just like dominated plumbing in Knoxville. I'm going to call them. Obviously, they want my business. So same way, if I go to the search bar and I type in Facebook advertiser, or Facebook manager, and one person comes up 15 different times with a lot of different pictures and they seem really interactive and then I can go and find them and do some research on them, I'm probably going to hire them versus the one guy that had a black and white picture or the one girl that had one cute headshot. No. Get interactive with these pictures. Make the pictures work for you. You're spending your time and energy to post them. Make sure they're benefiting you. Okay? And I would say, I told, um, I had a guy come spend a VIP intensive day with me on Monday, and he speaks Spanish and English. So I told him to make 
make one picture that says, you know, I buy houses. And maybe all the English pictures are blue. And then every time you put up a Spanish picture, it's red. Or it's red and blue, and the English pictures are green and yellow or something. But just some way so that people, there's a lot of bilingual people in the world today, okay? So if they see you advertising in English and in Spanish, that may speak directly to them anyway. Um, I speak redneck, <laughs> okay? I'm in East Tennessee. I speak proper English, and I also speak redneck. So I will advertise sometimes, depending on what I'm looking for. There's some ways that I can use some slang that will draw people in. I'll put an ad up also in very good, proper realtor English, and it'll draw a different crowd in, okay? There's different keywords that you can put on your pictures. Sometimes I say rent to own. Sometimes I say lease options. Sometimes I say for sale. All the same thing. It'll speak to different people. All I want it to do is make my phone ring so that I can get on the phone with them and figure out what they need. Maybe this house is too big. Maybe this house is too small. But if I can get them to call, I can start that conversation with them and steer them to where I want them to go. Okay? But you got to get them on the phone to be able to pitch. Right? So use your pictures. Get 20 pictures. Put them on a rotation. If you have a VA that does this, if you are a VA for somebody and they send you one picture, tell them you need 15 more. And put that puppy on a rotation so that every day you're giving more drops. More drops. If you coach baseball, if you coach baseball and you put a picture of a baseball up one day and say, hey, I coach baseball, that's fine. The next day, you put up a picture of a bat and you say, I help so-and-so swing 10 times faster with this bat. Okay, now you're talking to people that need batting practice. Uh, you put The next day you put a picture of a glove up and you say, I help so-and-so learn how to catch line drives better. Great, now you're talking to a different audience. It's all a baseball coach, but it's a different way of looking at it. And that's what you need to get across in Craigslist. That you do all sorts of different things. Okay, in Craigslist, I do real estate. I can't say, hey, I got five houses. I have to put five posts up, one post per house. But say, I only, I only put up three houses a day. So if I have 10 houses, then they're in a rotation as to which house gets posted. But every day in my description, it says, I have other houses available, call me. Or go to my other website, look at what else I have available. If you don't want to do a rent to own, maybe you want to just do a regular rental. I have apartments too. Okay, so leave cookie crumbs, leave popcorn, leave a trail so that if this doesn't fit them right now, you have other solutions. Okay, so maybe they don't want a Facebook manager. Maybe they want an Instagram manager. You and I know that's basically the same thing, but to them, it's totally different. But let them know. Use those keywords in your description that says that you can do some other things. Also, tell them you're willing to learn something new. Maybe you haven't done a LinkedIn managing account. You're willing to learn. Rachel's given you all the tools that you need to do it. Let them know. You already know more than they do. I promise you that. If they're looking for somebody to manage their LinkedIn, you know more automatically. And if you don't, you have all the resources to get it done. Okay. So when you post into Craigslist, the last page will give you, it's like a thank you page, but it says your direct URL is here. Take that URL copy and paste it onto all your social media platforms and drive traffic back to your Craigslist post. Okay, Craigslist is also really cute that whatever picture you put up first, it'll put that in the description. Okay, so if you are advertising on Craigslist, you have a place for rent or you're advertising for more plumbing gigs or you're advertising that you give guitar lessons or your client gives guitar lessons or whatever it is, use a good picture as the first one. If your client is good looking and they give a guitar lesson, put a picture of them on stage that says, I can teach you how to be a rock star. I can teach you how to make money playing gigs on Friday. Okay, whatever it is, make it kind of compelling, not boring. I give real estate lessons or I give guitar lessons or I can teach you how to play the piano, but you know, something more engaging like do you want to learn how to play Beethoven's blah, 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 or 
You've been playing Starry Night since you were eight. It's time to move on. Hire me. Okay, that's just more compelling. And when you click that URL and you post it onto Facebook, you're going to get a lot more hits. Okay, and put it on your personal page. Put it on your business page. I'm not talking about Facebook. I'm just talking about how to share Craigslist. Okay, share the good news everywhere you can. Um, okay, and your subject line. That was leading me into my next one. Your subject line on Craigslist is just as important as your subject line on an email. Don't be boring and say, hey, I give guitar lessons Monday and Tuesday from 6 to 9. Let me know if you want something. No. Say, we're, we're have a jam session on Mondays from 6 to 9. Come join. Get a free 30-minute intro. Or whatever you want to say, but make it compelling. Don't make it boring. Don't let it look like anybody else's. Also, when you start to post on Craigslist, I want you to go through and see what your competition has done. Okay, so some Craigslist, the end thing to do is to make everything bold, everything capitalized, everything with lots of exclamations, stars, asterisks, signs. I mean, it's like a bright neon light. But if you scroll down through Craigslist, you'll see that everything looks like that. So the stuff that starts to pop out, the stuff that starts to get you engaged in wanting to click this link, maybe the stuff that's written in all small letters. It may be that you capitalize every other letter or you capitalize the first letter of every word. Or maybe you put, you know, a phone number and then your information. Call now. So make sure your subject line is just as compelling as you would use to... Are you there? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Make sure your subject line is just as compelling as you would use in an email line. No boring email lines and no boring subject lines on Craigslist. Um, okay, when you register for Craigslist, you have to set up an email address. And if you are going to be using Craigslist really hard and heavy, I would suggest getting a new dummy email address. Okay, something that you can set up with an autoresponder so that you know every lead is going to get sent into a certain queue or that you check this one email address once a day and reply back to all your leads. If you're managing 10 different plumbing companies though, or you've got one plumbing company, one electrician, you're working with somebody else who's a health coach or you know whoever you're working with, you might wanna have different email addresses for all of them so that your canned response is specific to them. And I know that starts to get to be a lot of email addresses, but it will help the person that you're working for. That way if they wanna log in, then they don't see everybody else's stuff. They only see theirs, right? So I've got Whitney Buys Houses TN and I've got Whitney Buys Houses GA because I buy houses in Tennessee and I buy houses in Georgia. Obviously, they're gonna get a different response. They're in different states. If I started in Virginia, I'd start a Whitney Buys Houses VA at gmail.com. It's easy to set up a new email address and I promise it, it seems a little compartmentalized, but it'll really help you if you have one address to manage or to receive the leads per ad. It'll, it'll help you in the long run, I promise. Okay, so what do you say in the description? I hate to see a post that doesn't have a picture, that has a boring picture, but even worse than that, I hate a one-line description. If you're the biggest and baddest plumbing company in your town and you are managing their social media, then you need to make sure you have lots of SEO words, you have lots of keywords, you have lots of search terms. You know, if you're, I like, apparently I like to use this plumbing example, but if you are a plumber, you could say, you know, you make this subject line say, is your toilet clogged, can't flush, or kid flushed a toy down the sink, down the toilet, or lost your diamond ring down the sink. Those are great subject lines, but make sure you can back it up. You know, we've been in business for 15 years, that's fine, but you know, we have a success rate of 95%, or we can be out there today. If you've got a plumbing problem in Knoxville, Tennessee, call us today. We will be on the job within three hours. You know, give your whole pitch. Bring it out of people to make them call you. And also, don't put it in one big lump. So you write out this great description in Word. 
make sure because people are lazy if you give them one big paragraph they can't read it they don't want to read it but if you make it short sweet easy sentences they will read a lot of information and call because it was broken out it was easy they were looking on their phone anyway make it easy for the people okay if you are managing a social media account for a health coach you know maybe one of your ads says lose 10 pounds in 10 days or really get on a diet and stick to it or learn these fitness tips okay so maybe like I have a paragraph at the bottom it's kind of like a disclaimer it always says that I am a private investor I'm looking to buy houses I want to buy houses here I'm looking for apartments there I'm a broker I mean there's some stuff that you can keep the same on every ad but all of my houses you know they're never gonna say great investment I never want you to say we're the best company that doesn't tell me anything use different adjectives okay use go into Google figure out your uh, key terms your SEO terms and use those terms in your Craigslist ad because Craigslist feeds to Google they don't have to be looking in Craigslist for a plumber they could just type in plumber Knoxville and Craigslist posts will come up who knows how that happens I don't know how that happens all I'm telling you is that Craigslist is an awesome way to be advertising getting leads and building new clients it works if you're trying to buy stuff you need to be trying to buy on Craigslist put an ad out there that you want to buy this that or the other people will call you if you're trying to sell stuff whether it's services or products you need to have it on Craigslist and put it in two or three different categories put it up two or three different times a day 6 to 9 a.m. 6 to 9 p.m. but use Craigslist Craigslist is a social media platform I get tons of leads from Craigslist probably more from Craigslist than I do Facebook or Instagram okay so my last question that I had to cover um, somebody in here asked me about spammers and how do you tell a spammer from a real person I have two stories about spammers one I'm advertising all the time that I buy houses and then I've got houses for sale they're all over Craigslist I love it blah 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 right somebody put an ad on Craigslist and I didn't see it one of my fr friends on Facebook saw it and she knows that I use Craigslist so people just they surf Craigslist well there was somebody that put an ad up on Craigslist that said don't call Whitney nicely she's a pill head don't buy a house from her she's a pill head so my friend sent me this message and she was like I keep flagging it and I keep deleting it and I've been doing this for two or three days and I was like whoa don't flag it send me a screenshot of it so that I can look at it okay maybe there's something in it that I can recognize maybe I've made somebody mad and they're wanting to um, you know smear my name around town so the next time she saw it because I don't I don't look on Craigslist I post to Craigslist and then I'll leave it alone <laughs> this is a lot like I do Facebook I post and then leave it alone so she sent me a screenshot and sure enough somebody I don't even know who it was but I took that screenshot and I posted it to every social media account I could and I said it's just like you know somebody leaving you a bad review you can either ignore it and hope it doesn't happen or you can confront it right so the only way that I knew to confront it was to put this screenshot up and to say hey uh, somebody's talking bad about me on Craigslist if you see this please let me know please flag it blah 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 by the way and I live in East Tennessee I said by the way I take a Zyrtec every morning okay so if you don't want to work with an agent that takes a Zyrtec every morning you're gonna be hard-pressed to find an agent that isn't a pill head in East Tennessee okay because everybody in East Tennessee is taking a Claritin or a Zyrtec every day that does not make me a pill head okay so I got a very good response from that from my friends from my family from Facebook from Instagram got a little chuckle out of it but it also I don't know if this spammer was somebody who really knew me or not but they stopped putting that up they just stopped nobody else told me that they saw this post about me anymore maybe it was just a 16 year old that was bored I don't know um, the other spam that I've had is when you put these pictures up on Instagram Facebook and especially on Craigslist put a watermark on them put something on them that leads it back to you so that people know that it's you I had not learned this lesson yet 
So I was just posting pictures of houses and, you know, figuring everything was fine. Well, somebody who was probably just a fly by night or maybe they weren't even in America, they were just going to have people wire them money. Somebody was using my post that I put up twice a day, the pictures that I put up twice a day, and they changed it a little bit. So let's say I was asking 1500 for a house every month. They changed the ad that said we'd take $700 a month. No, we're not. Okay, and in their ad, they would say call Alvin or Whitney. They would put my cell phone number up. They would also put their own cell phone number up. So if people couldn't get a hold of this Alvin person, they would call Whitney and I would answer and I would be so confused and they would say, hey, I, I'll bring you the money right now. I've got $700. I would love to rent that house. And I was like, whoa, what are you talking about? Or I'd have people that would call and they're like, hey, we're at the house. We left the money in the mailbox. You said we could have it. And I was like, whoa, no, I didn't. So I had to print off, I had to find this scam, this spammer, and I printed off the Craigslist post and with a red marker I wrote scam on it and I posted it up um, on the front door of the house, the front window of the house, and the uh, garage doors. And then I posted a good post that had the right information up at the house. So it did take a while, it took probably about a week and a lot of confusion, but I lived through that experience, you could live through that experience. But what you got to do is make sure that people, because people are, they're a little leery on Craigslist because there are a lot of scammers and spammers on Craigslist. So the only way that you can overcome them is just the same way that you can overcome the people that are deleting your post. You have to be persistent, you have to put good information out there, and you have to spread the true good news like wildfire. Okay, you have to have websites that back up the information. You have to have social proof to back up the information. You have to say, you know, make sure you text this number. Make sure you email this account. Make sure you go look at this other website where I also have this information. Don't fall for scams. I'm a professional. I really do this. And then hope and pray that the Lord takes care of the rest. Okay, but if you have somebody that keeps emailing you and you think it's a canned response, I send a canned response back to them. If I have a lot of people, and on Craigslist, it's, it, they are scammers, and especially in real estate. You know, if I put a house up and I say investor special, then a lot of wholesalers are going to want to buy the house from me, and that's not who I'm looking for. I'm looking for end buyers. You're looking for end buyers. You're looking for end users. So you have to make sure that they have a way to get a hold of you to get in touch with you, to skip the scam, skip the spam, and come straight to the source. And that may be having, you know, uh, if this then that filter set up so that when your posting or similar posting gets posted to Craigslist, then if this then that will let you know, and you can either decide if it's scam or spam and delete it immediately so that only the good stuff survives. So. If you have these scammers and they're emailing you and they're calling you and you know that they're a scam, I don't really know of a foolproof way to get rid of them. All I can tell you to do is be more persistent and more consistent than they are. And the light will shine through. The good will win. But don't give up on Craigslist. It is an amazing social media platform. And when I see people in real life, they're the first to say, oh, I see you all the time on Craigslist. How do you keep up with so many Craigslist posts? Well, I've outsourced it, honestly, but <laughs> you can do it. I know you can do it. Does anybody have any questions? I have been through a lot on Craigslist here in the last couple minutes. Any industry can use Craigslist. And if you aren't sure if your industry is good on Craigslist, send me an email, info at WhitneyNicely.com. I will help you walk through this. If you are more interested in real estate, I've got a whole webinar that talks about real estate on Craigslist. I try not to talk too much about it on here. Um, but Rachel, I thank you so much for letting me come on live this morning. This has been great. Uh, I love live Facebook. So if you have any questions, email me, info at WhitneyNicely.com. Y'all can friend me. Uh, I'm Whitney Nicely East, but I don't really go by East. The feminist in me says I'm still Whitney Nicely. Any questions?
Anything, anything, anything? All right, well, y'all know how to get a hold of me. Let me know if you have any questions, and I really appreciate this. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Bye.